Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I'm your host, and on today's how-to, we're going to be discussing roller chain wear elongation and measurement. And in order to do that, I have to bring on my special guest. How you doing, Mr. Steve Barbacki from U.S. Subaki, the uh, global manufacturer and supplier of power transmission products. Welcome to the program. Very good. Thank you, Tom. You know what? Uh, we've got a lot of stuff on the table right here. What are we going to be talking about? Well, Tom, today we're going to review some of the basic procedures for measuring roller chain wear elongation. Okay. Where do we actually start? Because when I think of stuff like this, I'm thinking of roller coasters and huge change. Is that kind of like what we're talking about? Similar, similar. Okay. Well, before we start with the measurement process, it's a good to understand how wear elongation occurs and the benefits of monitoring chain wear. Wear elongation will occur to all chains over time as they run or pass over or join out the sprockets while under load. As the articulation occurs, the pins and bushings rotate against each other, causing the eventual wear. As the wear occurs, the length of the chain will increase and eventually this increase in length will result in sprocket engagement problems requiring chain and sprocket replacement. By monitoring the wear elongation, you can proactively plan chain replacement and schedule downtime before costly unplanned chain failures occur. Yeah, and that's something we don't want because it gets expensive. The word downtime, lost production, people don't like to hear that kind of stuff. Right, and that is why measurement and planning for replacement is so important for most roller chain applications. Also, by taking periodic measurements and monitoring the rate of elongation, you can evaluate preventative maintenance requirements before a roller chain is completely worn out. Now, before we start with the actual measurement, we're going to need a couple of tools. All right, what do we need? A caliper or other appropriate measuring device and a calculator to calculate the average length per foot from the measurements taken. There's an alternate method using the Sabaki wear scale, which we'll also demonstrate and explain. All right, what's next then? Next, you want to make sure the line or equipment where the roller chain is located has been safely locked and tagged out before we begin. Then we'll need to select a location where the chain is accessible and under load in order to obtain accurate results. Also, if the chain is bi-directional or does not make a full circuit throughout the system, then we'll need to measure a section which runs or passes over a sprocket since this is where the wear will be occurring. All right, so we're looking to take measurements in areas where the chain is under load and is passing over the sprockets, correct? Yes, we're looking to examine those areas which is where the wear occurs. All right, what then happens? Next, we want to calculate the chain elongation per foot based on our measurements. Let me demonstrate how the measurements should be taken. You know, you mentioned lockout, tag out earlier. We have to remind everybody when they're doing this stuff, wear their PPE, right? Exactly. Okay, you got yours on, we've got yours. Make sure you're wearing yours as well. All right, what do we got? In this case, we have a number 60 roller chain, three okay. quarter inch pitch, and using a zero to six inch caliper, I'll take a measurement over several pitches of chain. In this case, six rolls, or six pitches, for example. Okay. First, I'll take a measurement outside or over six rolls, record that number, then, taking a measurement over the same six rolls, but inside or within. You gotta do both though, outside and inside. Yes, by All taking right. both measurements, recording those numbers, and then taking an average, we will then determine the center of pin to center of pin distance over that section of chain that we've measured. All right. Taking that average and dividing by the number of pitches we measured, and then multiplying by the number of pitches per foot will give us an elongation per foot for that roller chain. Okay. We can also calculate the percent of elongation using the equation found in the Sabaki Installation and Maintenance Guide on page 17. This booklet can be viewed or downloaded from uh, ussabaki.com. A roller chain may be used until it has reached 2% elongation. At 2%, sprocket engagement problems will result. In many applications which are positioning or indexing or performing some critical operation, a roller chain may be considered worn out from a functional perspective long before it has elongated and reached 2%. It's a good idea to measure chains in these types of applications after they become worn out functionally to determine the specific worn out length for that application. You know, earlier you mentioned the Subaki wear scale. Uh, what exactly is this? How does it work? The Subaki wear scale will not determine an actual length mm -hmm. or a percentage of elongation. It'll tell you when the chain is worn out. It's quick and easy to use in the field. Okay, how do we do this? It works like this. We would take a section of roller chain, such as the number 60, mm -hmm. position the scale against the protruding pin, okay. and off to the right, you'll notice a series of marks on the scale. Okay. The number 60 chain mark will align with a rivet center as that chain elongates eventually. When the chain elongates to the point where this rivet position aligns with mm -hmm. the mark on the scale, that indicates the chain has elongated to the 2% limit or is worn out. Oh, I see that. As long as it stays there, it's good, but once it's elongated, time to get it out of here. Yes. 
All right. Well, sounds good. Well, Steve, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate the demonstration. Thank you, Tom. All right. That's Steve with Subaki. And if you need any more information, don't forget, you can contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location, and they'll be able to help you out. Hopefully, this helps uh, your particular applications. And don't forget, as we mentioned earlier, proper PPE must be worn when it's on the job. Well, that's it for this how-to video. But you know, you can always look for other how-to videos from Motion Industries. I'm Tom Clark. I'm your host. Thanks so much for watching.